Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. You know what's fun? Going on a power trip. And something that's always a power trip for me personally is when I beat the final boss of a video game and if I ever 100% a video game. It feels amazing being that final boss and discovering everything about that video game. It's a good time. Hall Monitor is the episode where Spongebob becomes Hall Monitor at Mrs. Pop's boating school and causes chaos in Bikini Bottom. This episode aired on August 28, 1999 and is the first time in the series where Mrs. Puff gets arrested, which becomes a recurring theme throughout the series. This is also one of the few boating school episodes that doesn't actually focus on Spongebob's boating test. There aren't a ton of episodes where this happens, but I'd argue there are definitely a few examples of this occurrence. I'd also argue that this episode takes a bit of a different spin on the classic Hall Monitor Power Trip story. Spongebob does go on a power trip and does crazy sh** after he becomes Hall Monitor, but he doesn't do it in the hallways of the boating school in a way that causes him to lose all his friends. You'll see what I mean as we dive in. So let's watch this episode and relive Spongebob's Hall Monitor power trip and the first time Mrs. Puff gets arrested. So the episode starts up and we see Mrs. Puff's boating school for the second time with some very diligent students. Mrs. Puff says it's time to announce the hall monitor of the day and looks through her list of students. Spongebob is the only student who hasn't been the hall monitor yet. There were only 8 students on that list including Spongebob. And since Mrs. Puff is always trying to avoid Spongebob, how can this be a hall monitor of the day thing? Mrs. Puff tries to get other students to be hall monitor, but nobody else wants to, and eventually she has no choice but to let Spongebob be the hall monitor of the day. Spongebob is very excited to be hall monitor, but before he can take the uniform, Spongebob wants to make a speech. The speech lasts all day long, puts everybody else in the room to sleep, and has a Shakespeare reference. At the end of his speech, Spongebob finally puts on the uniform, but the school day was over. Mrs. Puff says that Spongebob overdid the speech, and Spongebob is sad and gives back the uniform. Mrs. Puff lets Spongebob wear the uniform till the next day, and Spongebob walks away happy, leaving Mrs. Puff worried about the consequences of what she just did. Forget about that for now. Did you see that exterior shot of the school? The school just looks like that one single classroom. How can there be a hall monitor when we don't even see any halls in this episode? Later on, Spongebob is walking through Bikini Bottom and sees a broken traffic light. He decides to help out because he is the HALL MONITOR! A montage occurs of Spongebob giving traffic directions to all the vehicles, ultimately resulting in multiple boat wrecks. Later, he sees a couple of fish having dinner and left their window open, so he decides to show them why they shouldn't do that. He dresses up like the open window maniac and they run away. After that, Spongebob notices some kind of pink goo. He tastes it, realizes it was strawberry, and thought it was the doing of some vandals. What would vandals do with strawberry ice cream, Spongebob? I will admit it's possible somebody could have littered it, but there was no cup or cone by that ice cream, so I don't think this would have been much of a crime. He sees Patrick above him eating strawberry ice cream and screams to him. Patrick gets startled and drops the ice cream on Spongebob. Patrick comes down and squashes Spongebob. Spongebob says he has to turn Patrick in for littering the ice cream, and Patrick starts to cry. Just then, a paper boy named Morty gives Spongebob a newspaper with some news about this maniac that came to Bikini Bottom causing car wrecks and breaking into somebody's house. That sounds familiar, except I don't think the maniac caused car wrecks, it caused boat wrecks instead. Spongebob decided to bring the maniac to justice and recruited Patrick to help him, and Patrick puts his ice cream cone on his head as a symbol of authority. With Patrick's ex-criminal advice, they decide to go get ice cream. Twice. Spongebob has them change tactics and gives them walkie-talkies. Spongebob leaves to go find the maniac, and then some actual police officers come by. They ask Patrick if he saw the maniac and show him a wanted poster. <gasps> I knew it! I knew those actions the maniac did sounded familiar. Patrick screamed at the mere sight of a drawing of the maniac, who was of course Spongebob, and the police officers lifted it up and down constantly, and Patrick screamed on and off. The police officers drove away, laughing, and Patrick called Spongebob saying that he was getting scared and wanted to go home. Spongebob decided to make his way back to Patrick right as it got dark. As Patrick waited for Spongebob, he came across a wanted poster of the maniac. He didn't scream at the sight of a drawing of the maniac this time. That's gross. He saw Spongebob, but only recognized Spongebob as the maniac. 
Patrick said that the maniac was at the same place SpongeBob was, and SpongeBob started to get worried. Patrick told SpongeBob to run away, but everywhere SpongeBob went, Patrick said the maniac went to that place too. SpongeBob eventually hid in the mailbox, but Patrick said he was there too. SpongeBob screams, bursts his arms and legs through the mailbox, and runs around like crazy, destroying a few houses and breaking through a fence. He finally sees a poster of the maniac and realizes that he himself was the maniac. Oh, yes he is. Soon enough, he's surrounded by police officers. Mrs. Puff arrives too and scolds SpongeBob for what he did. She tells the police officers he was her responsibility, but then she gets arrested because they thought she was responsible for SpongeBob's actions. Later at boating school, Mrs. Puff's teaching her class through a video camera. She then tells SpongeBob she wants to see him after class six months from that day, and the episode ends. You know, I just realized something. I know Mrs. Puff's in jail, but if she's teaching through the camera, why doesn't she just scold SpongeBob through the camera? Unless, of course, she wants to yell at him in person, then, you know, that makes sense too. So that was Hall Monitor, and I really liked this episode. Before I talk about what I like from the episode, I want to bring up the parts that I think are kind of strange. There aren't that many though. This episode is about hall monitors, but the boating school is rarely shown with hallways. Most of the time, all we see is just this single classroom. Hell, even before Spongebob leaves the room, we can see that he's about to go outside, so where are the actual halls in this episode? Now there were some actual hallways shown in the boating school, specifically from episodes 86, The Bully, and 104, New Student Starfish from season 3. Also, Huh. I think that's it. Of course, these halls could have been in this episode, and we just never saw them, but I think that if Spongebob was monitoring these halls for 5 seconds before the bell rings and he gets trampled, then we would have seen the halls, and I think that this concept would have worked just a bit better. Of course, this episode still works the way it does, with Spongebob causing havoc throughout Bikini Bottom, but Spongebob monitoring the halls for 5 seconds before getting trampled and causing havoc downtown would still be really neat to see, in my opinion. Also, like I mentioned before, if Mrs. Puff can teach over the video camera, why doesn't she just scold Spongebob over the camera after class is over? Of course, maybe she would want to punish Spongebob in person, or maybe the warden wouldn't let her use the camera after her standard class time is over. So that makes sense too. But those are my only points of criticism. Now's the part where I discuss what I like about the episode. There are quite a few funny moments in this episode. I love the montage where Spongebob is helping to give directions to the traffic jam, as well as the brief scene of Spongebob being the open window maniac. The scene of Spongebob getting trampled was so quick and sudden, and it was always funny to me. I also really love Patrick in this episode. My favorite part was always the scene where Patrick was just screaming on and off whenever the police officer was showing him the poster of the maniac. And the part where Patrick wears the cone on his head is charming in a silly way. Mrs. Pop was shown getting arrested here for the first time, and her going to jail is something I've seen people talk about quite a bit with this show. There were a few times where some of my friends asked me how many times Mrs. Puff got arrested. I mentioned this near the beginning, but in my opinion, this episode offers an interesting take on that hall monitor power trip cliche. When somebody becomes hall monitor and goes mad with power and ends up losing all their friends. While Spongebob does become hall monitor in this episode and goes on a power trip, it's not done in a way where Spongebob's friends get pissed off with him. Even Jimmy Neutron, one of the most beloved Nickelodeon cartoons of all time, still has Jimmy become the hall monitor and become mad with power and his friends are pissed. The biggest difference here is that he just uses a lot more technology that he invents which makes him even more mad with power. This take does give it some flair and I do like this episode, but it's still the basic power mad hall monitor story. But with Spongebob, most of this episode doesn't even take place in the school. He tries to help out around town doing his Spongebob shenanigans, and of course does more harm than good in typical Spongebob fashion. But he doesn't lose his friends here, which makes this stand out a bit more in my opinion. And even the police are involved in this episode. Can't say that about the Jimmy Neutron episode. Obviously I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that typical Power Mad Hall Monitor tale, but I do really like what this episode does with it. In conclusion, I feel this episode is pretty good. With all the funny moments, crazy destruction sequences, and classic Spongebob shenanigans, this is a fun watch. 
And that's just about all I have to say about it. Hall Monitor is a good episode. From all the funny scenes, to the interesting take on the Hall Monitor power trip story, to the crazy maniac part, I think that it's pretty good. Even if I did nitpick here and there, that's still not going to change the fact that this episode is a pure example of what Spongebob is all about. And since this episode is about power trips, I've always wondered if police officers ever feel like they're on power trips just by driving around in their police cars.